So uh, since I'm the only man who's going to be speaking at the event today, I didn't want to start by saying anything too controversial. <laughs> so I thought I'd begin by sharing a few of my thoughts on Bill Cosby. <laughs> um, growing up in the 80s and 90s, I watched Bill Cosby on television. He was a successful actor and TV dad. And I have to admit that I really looked up to him. Um, you know, I imagined that when I became a father, I'd be the kind of dad that he was. I'd be tough when I needed to be tough, kind when I needed to be kind, and I'd bring a sense of levity and humor to every situation that I entered. <laughs> Which is why recently when the accusations came out about him being a sexual predator, I really struggled. And I struggled because I admired him so much. And as the evidence mounted and I, I couldn't argue with the truth anymore, I realized that it wasn't so much Cosby that I was attached to. It was the role that he played. In a way, I wanted Cosby to be perfect because I wanted to think that I could be perfect. And the whole thing got me thinking a lot about role models and the power they have. Cosby's role had so much power that even his own victims were kept quiet for years. And I started to wonder, what are our role models made of? And are they made of the right kinds of stuff to help us be successful and actually change the world? Or do they simply perpetuate the same system we're a part of? And this question is really important because role models define a lot of who we are. So we use comparisons as a way to define who we are. And role models provide a powerful comparison, a template, if you will. Role models also help us understand the world. Their lives give us a sense of direction as well as the terrain we might encounter along the way. And role models help us understand the future. They give us a sense of who we could become as well as what the world could become. And this question of role models isn't just a theoretical one for me, it's a very personal one. It's something I struggled with for many years. Growing up, I did what a lot of young men do. I chose my father as my primary role model. And that worked out great until I got to college and I realized that I was like him in all the ways I didn't want to be, <laughs> including a cheesy sense of humor and an inability to grow hair. And I was unlike him in all the ways I thought I should be. So I seemed to lack the confidence, the drive, the motivation he had. And I felt this at the time as a huge loss. And so I went out and I decided I need to replace him as a model. And I went on a fervent search. And my search was so fervent that by the time I was 28 years old, I had had 28 different jobs. I had done everything from working for a touring rock band to being a preschool teacher to working at a, a store that sold sex toys. I have done it all. <laughs> and although I learned a lot about myself and got a lot of interesting experiences from that, I didn't really answer this question, who do I want to become and who should I emulate? And so I did what you do when you're 28 years old and you've had 28 different jobs. No, I didn't move in with my parents. <laughs> I moved into a Zen monastery. And I learned a lot about my own mind and what it means to be responsible and to build solid character. But the most important lesson I learned was that a lot of our suffering comes from our obsessive focus on outcomes. We spend a huge amount of our lives trying to make the world match the picture we have in our minds. And so often it doesn't match. And I realized that this is not only the problem we make in our lives, well, not only the mistake we make in our lives, but it's the same mistake we make with our role models. So typically when we choose role models, we tend to focus on two things. The first of which is persona. It's a great persona, right? So we have these idealized images of these people we look up to, whether it's an actor or a successful businesswoman. And the problem with personas is they present just a thin picture of who someone actually is. It's really an airbrush version of someone's life. And we think that that airbrush version is going to inspire us, but it actually has the opposite effect. So a study done at the University of Richmond found that when women were shown pictures and descriptions of very successful women, that they actually felt discouraged and less capable of completing a task. And it really makes a lot of sense because the problem with a persona is a persona is perfect and we are imperfect. We see their perfection in our imperfection. If you looked at my LinkedIn profile, you're going to learn about the schools I went to and the jobs that I've had. But there's so much about me that you won't learn. You won't learn that I was basically stoned out of my mind for 10 years of my life. <laughs> not on there. You're not going to learn that I experimented with bisexuality in college. 
a lot of men wouldn't admit that. And you're not going to learn that I have a secret love of Katy Perry music. <laughs> Deep and lasting love. But all of these details, these imperfections, these flaws, these little complicated facts about me, what make me human, what make me easy to connect with. And we need that in our role models. And they're lost if we only look at the persona. The second thing we look at is talent. And talent might seem like a better metric to use, but talent can also be deceptive. So a study published by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that when you look in a simulation at the most successful players, and the moderately successful players, the moderately successful ones are actually more impressive. And the reason is there's a variety of chance events that affect performance. So often the top players have access to resources that other players don't have access to, or they take risks that most of us wouldn't benefit from taking. And a great example of this is Lance Armstrong. He took huge risks to win the Tour de France. I do not want to emulate Lance Armstrong. And so if we put aside talent and persona, if we put aside these outcome-based things, what do we choose instead? And so I started to think of myself, maybe amazing people don't change the world because they seek these powerful outcomes. Maybe they change the world because they live from a powerful intention that motivates them every day to achieve their goals. And so I looked at the people in my life who had really had a big impact, and I said, who are these people? What have they done? And I realized that it wasn't because they played some role in my life. They changed me because they presented a wholeness of humanity to me. Their intentions inspired my intentions. But I realized that calling them role models didn't make a lot of sense. And so I came up with a new word. I'm a writer. I'm allowed to do that. I started calling them whole models. <laughs> and I called them whole models because living from an intention let them show up as their whole selves in every aspect of their lives from their communities to their relationships to their businesses, showing up again and again, wholehearted in everything they did. But of course, you can't just invent a term without defining what it means. So I, I studied them and I found these six traits that made them really special and amazing. And the first, the first three have to do with embracing complexity. And the first trait has to do with embracing duality. This is a picture of me when I was 20 years old. I obviously have more hair and a joint. <laughs> and what I've learned from whole models is that if I want to be successful, I need to integrate a little party toku into a little clean cut toku. <laughs> and the most powerful example I've seen of someone living from this place of duality is Sabrina Parsons, who is the CEO of the Palo Alto software company. When she gave birth to her first child, she described this visceral feeling of not wanting to have her child away from her, to not leave him at daycare. And so she was faced with this choice that a lot of women are faced with. Do I play the role of the perfect mother or the role of the perfect CEO? Well, she said, I don't like those choices. Those are crappy choices. So she took her baby into the office, put the baby in a sling, and got to work. And if the baby was crying and upset, she took care of the baby. If the baby was quiet, she worked. And this brave choice, which forced her to endure a lot of criticism from both professional women and mothers, not only changed the way her industry looked at what it means to be a CEO and a mother, but her own company changed its perspective on what it means to be a parent and a professional. So the company developed a series of flexible rules that allowed parents to bring their children into the office, as well as to take time off to spend time with their children. She only was able to do this because she wasn't worried about what it looked on the outside, what the outcome was, but the intention to honor all important parts of herself, the CEO and the mother. The second thing that whole models do amazingly well is they embrace their shadow. Meg Warden, who's a coach and speaker I know in Portland, Oregon, spent time when she was younger in prison. And even though she could pretend that part of her life didn't exist anymore, she shares that story as a way to encourage and inspire others. And what Meg understands and a lot of whole models understand is if you really want to get control over your shadow, these dark, shameful parts of yourself, you have to confront them and own them. It's only when you hide them away that we start to have problems. And the way that she was able to do this is because she's not worried about what people think about the fact she spent time in prison. She worried about the, she's worried about the intention she lives her life from. And how can she use that intention to share and empower others? The third thing that whole models do is they embrace failure. And embracing failure is different than accepting failure. We hear a lot about accepting failure on the pathway to success, especially from very successful people. But embracing failure 
especially when you're talking about an intention, means that sometimes failure might happen, but it doesn't define who you are. So Lowell Hope, who's the man who introduced me to meditation about eight years ago, told me one time that he'd had dozens of conversations about meditation practice with people at parties and events. And most of those conversations didn't turn into anything. But he kept having them because he knew sharing the practice of meditation was meaningful and important. What Lowell understands is that the meaning of your life is not defined by success and failure. It's defined by how you show up, the intention to bring to every situation. If Malala's assassins had been effective, would we call her a failure? It's because she shows up, whether she lives or dies, for women that makes her such a powerful model. On top of embracing complexity and struggle, whole models are driven by these powerful forces. And the first one is service. A friend of mine, Corbett Barr, who created the website Fizzle and Think Traffic, could make a lot more money working for a marketing firm or a startup company. But instead, he's dedicated his time to building a community of entrepreneurs dedicated to service. And what he understands in the profit sector is what people in the nonprofit sector have understood for a long time. If you want to truly impact the world, you have to serve powerfully. And he's able to serve powerfully because he keeps track of his outcomes, but he's not ruled by his outcomes. He's ruled by his intention to help people create businesses that change lives. And that is a truly powerful intention. Next, whole models embrace passion. And what's amazing about intention is intention fuels an unbelievable amount of passion. Another friend and client of mine, Leo Babauta, who writes the blog Zen Habits, has achieved every possible outcome you could want to achieve with a blog. He has over a million readers. He's been listed on Time Magazine's top 25 blogs. And yet he shows up every day to write a post and to improve his habit formation techniques. And the way he's able to sustain such amazing passion is he's not worried about the number of his users. He's worried about the intention he has to help people change their lives. And last, but definitely not least, whole models are driven by authenticity. Nothing's more authentic than a dog. <laughs> so authenticity may be the most important trait of a whole model. And the reason is that when you focus on outcomes, you sometimes have to compromise authenticity. But when you live from a powerful intention, authenticity is something that comes naturally from everything you do. And as I was trying to think of the best example I could use for an authentic person in my life, I realized something else I love about looking through the lens of intention. And that's that you start to see people in your life that have had a big impact on you that you never realized before. So while my father was off flying planes in the Air Force and working in his business, my mother was the one at home taking care of us. And for a long time, I just saw her work as the work of a mother. But when I looked through the lens of intention, I realized that from the very first day I was born, she was teaching me about service and about showing up again and again for the people you love. When I was in high school and I was seeking the approval of my friends and my teachers, her approval was always there, giving me the courage and the strength I needed to embrace my duality, to embrace my complexity. And outside the home, she was a teacher. She taught English and public speaking and she quietly shaped thousands of lives. She taught them to think rationally and how to create an argument that was powerful. But she never had a lot of fame or money, so when I look for role models, I go, oh, I can't choose my mother. She doesn't have the things I want. But when I look through intentions, I realize that my mother throughout my entire life had been shaping me. And I realize that the kind of success I wanna have is not the kind of success that my father has, and it's wonderful success. I wanna be successful in the way that my mother's successful in the way that I connect with people and help them and nurture them. And if I can't, I can't help but think, if I can change the perspective of my mother so drastically by looking through this lens of intention, what would change for our lives and our societies and our communities if we look through the lens of intention instead of the lens of outcome? And that's why I wanna ask you to do two things today. And the first is to find a whole model. It's a picture of my mother on the far right. She's a beautiful woman. Just like me, the whole model you might find may not be in a place you expect. Find someone whose intentions inspire you, who the why that they live their life from inspires you deeply. Support them, emulate them, follow their example. You know, I hear all the time we don't have enough female role models. And I agree we need more women in CEO positions and women in government. But I meet amazing women every day who inspire me with their courage and their tenacity and their strength, 
Why can we follow their example now? Why can we look to them now? And that's why I need you to do the second thing, which is to be a whole model. You know, amazing people don't change the world because they seek powerful outcomes. Amazing people change the world because they live from powerful intentions. And that's why it's easy to think that there's going to be some future you, some future woman, some future generation of women, some future company that's going to find success and finally set the example that we need. But we don't have to wait for that. You can live from an intention today. You can live from this intention right now in your seat. You just have to decide what it is and start being it. Start showing up in your next conversation. So please, be a whole model. Live from the intention that will change your life and the life of everyone you meet.